All right, so today I'm comparing two of Orient's watches, the Bambino Gen 2 version 2 and the Sun and Moon version 3. Uh, for starters, I would like to point out that I do have individual reviews of each of these two beauties on the channel, and the links to each of those videos will be posted on the description of this video, as well as on the top right corner of this screen. Now, with that out of the way, let's begin. Now, as far as the contents are concerned, neither one of these feature accessories nor premium tidbits, which is to be expected from watches at their price points. They both feature the watch, an instruction manual, the warranty, and the box itself. Now, a key thing to point out is that the Bambino's outer box looks far more premium than the Sun and Moon's. Now, the situation flips as you open up both of them, since the Sun and Moon's box is a far more unorthodox type of box, and it definitely stands out more, and it definitely looks like it holds the premium watch, as opposed to the uh, Bambino's more, you know, traditional type of box. Still very nice, still very, you know, classy looking, but nothing exceptional either. Now, as far as the watch overview and specs are concerned, this is where the watches really start to differ. They might both be from the same brand, but the Sun and Moon is definitely a step above the Bambino in just about every way. Now, the Bambino in front of us today features a gold-colored stainless steel case with a white dial and a chocolate brown strap, while the Sun and Moon V3 features a silver-colored stainless steel case with a white dial and a black leather strap. There are different flavors for you to pick from, links in the description to each of these and their alternate colors, but these happen to be the two colors I purchased for myself because I personally found them to be the most interesting of each selection. Now, both dials are white and feature Roman numerals, but that is essentially all they have in common. The Bambino offers a simpler watch face with gold-colored scissor hands and Roman numerals, a date indicator, and a railroad track charter ring on the outside. The Sun and Moon, however, features black hands and Roman numerals, a day of the week indicator, a date indicator, an AM PM indicator, a dual textured dial, and a dotted chapter ring on the outside. Now the watch's measurements differ as well. Uh, not including the crowns, the Bambino features a 40.5 millimeter case size, while the Sun and Moon features a 42.5 millimeter case size. With crowns included, the Bambino measures 46.5 millimeters, uh, while the Sun and Moon measures 50.5. Millimeters. While the size difference of 2 millimeters does not sound like a noticeable difference, believe me, it is. The Bambino's lug width is 21 millimeters, while the Sun and Moon's is 22. This means that finding a replacement strap would be far simpler to do for the Sun and Moon, since 22 millimeters is far more commonly found. Now, including the watch's crystals, the Bambino's thickness is about 11.8 millimeters across, while the Sun and Moon's is a total of 14 millimeters. Given these measurements, you'd find that the Bambino would be far easier to fit under the cuff than the Sun and Moon would be. The Bambino features a dome-shaped mineral crystal, while the Sun and Moon features a practically flat sapphire crystal. Long term, sapphire is tougher to break and tougher to scratch, making the Sun and Moon the more durable of the two. I would like to add, however, that the dome shape of the Bambino's crystal gives it a sleeker look as opposed to the Sun and Moon, whose case rises higher to meet with the flat crystal. Both watches come with a leather strap, however, the leather on the Bambino strap is a glossy finish with a glossy feel to it, while the leather on the Sun and Moon strap is matte and feels more textured and skin-like. Now on the inside, both straps look and feel exactly the same. Another important difference between the two straps is the clasps themselves. The Bambino offers a more traditional buckle clasp, while the Sun and Moon offers a deployant clasp. One of the advantages of a deployant clasp is that it keeps the leather looking new for a longer period of time, since the strap bends less often and is really only penetrated during the first time the user puts on the watch. Now, both clasps do display the company name on them. For my 6.25 inch wrist, both straps fit relatively comfortably. Neither of these straps are what I would consider to be top quality, but I must say that they both get a pass in my book due to their acceptable level of comfort, fast break-in period, and decent looks. The Bambino does not feature an exhibition case back, but the Sun and Moon does. As with most exhibition case backs, it is, it looks absolutely stunning, and it is always such a joy to watch your investments mechanism just run and run and run. Now, as far as their movements are concerned, the Bambino features the F6724 caliber automatic, while the Sun and Moon features the F6B24 caliber automatic. 
So what does this translate to in actual use? Apparently not a thing. When left to run for a total of 24 hours without additional winding or moving, both watches gained a total of 6 seconds. So yes, not the most accurate watches in the world, but pretty good. Although both of these are automatic, they can also be manually wound to activate them. When winding these, they both make a sort of sandpaper-like sound. However, the sun and moon sounds a bit more robust and metallic with a slight ticking sound behind it. Here's the sound of the Bambino. Now here's the sound of the sun and moon. Both watches feature a hackable seconds hand, so pulling out the crown to second position stops the seconds hand, allowing you to set the time completely to your liking. Now while both watches feature a date window, the Sun and Moon also features a day of the week indicator and an AM PM indicator. All of these functions can be adjusted by pulling the crown out to first position. More details in the individual reviews. Both watches feature a power reserve rated at 40 hours. In my testing the BBBB, both watches feature a power reserve rated at 40 hours. In my testing, the Bambino lasted a total of 45 and a half hours, which is longer than the Sun and Moon's 42 hours. Both performed above the target, but the Bambino must have lasted longer since its mechanism is less intricate and must be less power hungry. The Sun and Moon offers the greatest water resistance, offering a total of 50 meters, while the Bambino offers a lesser 30 meters. Uh, regardless, I really wouldn't go jumping into any pools with either of these two. It's just. You just don't do that. Both watches do feature a somewhat loud rotor, but they can be easily ignored in a real world scenario. However, the Bambino's rotor does sound slightly cheaper and is the most noticeable of the bunch. So here's the Bambino with some moderate shaking, moderate aggression. Now here's the sun and moon with some moderate shaking and moderate aggression. Now it's time for the conclusion. Um, I originally purchased the Sun and Moon because I fell in love with the Roman numerals, white dial, and complicated movement of it all. It's really nice. However, the fairy tale completely shattered when I finally received it and realized just how thick the watch is. I mean, not that it's like a huge deal breaker, but it's just, it's too thick for what I was looking for. It's, you know, it's not thin enough to be a nice dress watch. It's not small enough to be a nice dress watch. It's just, it's more of like a casual, uh, maybe like, you know, want to look good on a Saturday kind of outfit. Especially for my 6.25 inch wrist. Now if it were a diver, the 42 millimeter size would definitely make sense for me, but not for a dress watch. So this is when I started to look into the Bambino and realized that it is a smaller dress watch with a thinner body. Now I do prefer the more compact, thin body of the Bambino and its dome-shaped crystal which makes it seem like it is thinner than it actually is. Its steampunk looking dial is one I fell in love with and continue to love, unlike the Sun and Moons. The Bambino simply checks off more of what I was looking for than the Sun and Moon does and for that reason, I chose to keep the Bambino and get rid of the Sun and Moon. Now I really do love both of these watches, really I do, but they each appeal to a different type of consumer. Now as a watch, they both excel at their most important duty, telling time. No one of these outranks the other in terms of accuracy, so that is an irrelevant factor in your decision making process. Now do keep in mind that the Sun and Moon's price typically ranges around 250 to 300 US dollars, while the Bambino is around half of that price at around 100 to 150 dollars. If what you seek is a large busy dial for a more casual hipsterish outfit, the Sun and Moon is definitely the watch for you. If what you seek is a sleek and thin vintage looking piece for suits or even business casual outfits, the Bambino is the watch for you. Anyway, that's gonna do it for me. Uh, I hope this video helped your purchasing decision. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell. Remember, I am primarily an audio channel, but I do review other tech stuff, watches, you know, stuff for enthusiasts every now and then. Uh, so yeah, I would appreciate it. Go ahead and check out the Patreon. Got a lot of nice tiers with a lot of nice stuff. And uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope this video helped your purchasing decision. And I'll see you in the next one.